Welcome back to the Off Good family. Today I'm going to teach you guys how to make some stock from um, chicken bones and I use this for really nice um, thick chicken soups or you can use it to make chicken pies which I'm actually using it for today. Let's get on. Okay to make chicken stock you're going to need a roast chicken and keep the juices that come off. You're going to need a carrot, um, one big onion or a couple of small ones, one stick of celery and if, if you come to the end of it you can always use the you know, the bits of the bushy bit that you're not going to use for anything else. And you need a pot. First point, let's get all of the chicken off here and put that to one side to store. Do not chuck the bones away, that is what you need. Okay, I've added to my stock pot all of the bones, the skin, anything, you know, all the unedible bits. The skin is not unedible, but I, um, I added it to this one because I'm not eating it. Now I need to chop all the veg. Okay, you rough chop everything and now you add that to the stock pot. Next, add seven peppercorns and fill with boiling water. Make sure the water covers the whole lot. You may have noticed I haven't added any salt to my stock and that is actually on purpose. I don't add, well I try not to add salt to any of my cooking and I found if you add the celery it doesn't need salt um, when it's in a pie or when it's a soup. It, it's the celery for some reason makes it have a very salty taste and it stops the need for any salt but by all means add salt if you want to. Okay, now what we need to do is bring it up to a boil, get it like on a rolling boil and then reduce it to a simmer. Leave it for about two hours, checking it intermittently and topping up water as needed. Okay, I'm going to attempt to show you how I make my pies. They're not amazing, they're not, not amazing. Um, but it'll just give you an idea of how to make a pie if you've never done it before. Now I'm cheating with the pastry because I've gone out and bought some, I just don't have time. I would usually make my own pastry, well, Crystal would, she's the, the boss when it comes to pastry, she's amazing. But um, So I've bought some pastry um, and I'm just going to show you what I'd put in it. All I, It's going to be a really, really simple pie, well, pies. and. Um, yeah, just I, I hope it helps you. If for some reason it's just me chopping a few bits of edge and then it goes to the end of the video or whatever, you know something's happened that stopped me being able to record. And it does happen, but with something like pies, I can't just come back to it later because that's our tea tonight. Okay, for my pie, you're going to need mushrooms. And this is a good thing to do if you're, you know, if you're, for example, mushrooms and onions are a bit old, shove them in a pie, no one will ever notice. But mushrooms, um, one big onion or two small onions, a handful of potatoes, a couple of um, things of celery, and then some pastry. We're also going to be adding chicken, which I've just taken off the bone, and obviously I'm using the bones to make the stock, which we'll also need. But I'm going to peel and get all this ready, and then these three will all be shoved in a frying pan with a bit of olive oil to get them to be um, nice and a little bit tender. Before you chop your veg to be fried, you wanna peel your potatoes to boil them off because you're gonna need that all at the same sort of time. But you're not in any rush because obviously at this point I'm waiting for the stock, so that's at least two hours off. Olive oil. Okay, now you just wanna fry it until it's a nice color and it's um, nice and soft, not crunchy. You can leave it crunchy if that's what you want. You know, it's all about textures and flavors, um, but I'm just gonna fry this off until it's how I know uh, myself, the kids, and the wife likes it. Okay, so while all that's cooking, simmering, boiling, frying, and whatever, um, I'm gonna cut all of the pastry into circles, and all I'm gonna do, roll it out and use a bowl, and cut as many circles out as I can, ball that back up, roll it out, and cut some circles, and I'm just gonna do that and I'm going to put a little bit of um, flour in between each one and a bit of baking parchment just so when it comes to it I can just get on and I can make as many as I need to. Now um, I've had many rolling pins, me and my wife used to make cakes for friends and families because it would work out cheaper than buying presents, I know that sounds really cheap. I'll put a few little pictures up in a second of the cakes we used to make. But um, I had loads of different rolling pins, wooden ones, marble ones and all that and none of them worked as well as I'd like. I now use a piece of PVC pipe and obviously clean, brand new and sterilised and so on. But um, I've always found that's the best thing. So if you don't have a rolling pin, find yourself some PVC pipe. It'll cost you no money at all and you can have it to any length you like. Tip of the day. This here is some old parchment paper I used to cover a um, fruitcake I made for Crystal's birthday, which was a couple of days ago. So basically, once you've um, put it in the oven, it sort of goes a lot... Um, a lot more stiff and it's not it can't be used for many things so I'm actually going to use this to actually put the layers of um, pastry down on and then I can layer them all up 
Now I'm going to be cutting them to about this size. So all I need to do, cut a bit off each edge and I should have lots of sheets of um, parchment paper. If I do it right, if not, well there we go. You don't get any points for neatness in this one, so don't worry about it. If you've heard my phone go off a few times, it's um, my wife is getting a hold of me, so please excuse it. But it's a real household, so we do message. Okay, so these should all be separate now. Oh, I missed a couple at the back. There we go. As you may notice, I'm using way too much flour, but you know, I've got a lot of it and I, you know, I don't mind wasting it sometimes. And I'm in quite a rush right now. Okay, I'm going to keep doing that until I've filled all my sheets and used up all the pastry and then I'm going to put them in the fridge just while I wait for the next stage. Okay, now it's time to chop your potatoes that you've boiled into whatever size pieces you want and add them to the stuff that you'd fried. I don't chop them too, too small. You know, whatever, it's up to you. Um, I've got young kids who like smaller sized things so like for example if we have a chicken soup they don't particularly like some of the stuff in it but if I um, blend it all up they'll eat the whole lot so it's like sometimes smaller is better sometimes it's not okay now the chicken Um, chopping this does actually allow you to check to make sure that you haven't left any bones in there, which is good. You don't have to. Again, it's totally up to you how big or small you have everything in it, you know. And it gives you a chance to eat some as well. Chef's prerogative, of course. Because I'm making my pies quite small, I'm chopping this quite small so we don't have stuff trying to stick out the edges and so on, you know, so there is a, a reason to do it. But again, totally up to you. Now to make the nice white sauce. Okay, so the next thing I want to do is make a roux. A roux is just a way of introducing flour into your sauce without it getting lumpy. If you were to just add um, the flour straight to the sauce, you'd have a lumpy mess. You can whisk it out, it just takes ages. So what you do, you need some butter in a pan, you heat it up, then you add your um, flour to that, mix it all up, and that way, it, when you put it in with your thing, it will all separate in a nice, even, beautiful way, hopefully. It normally works, 99% of the time. 
As with most of my recipes, I just basically add a bit and see what happens. So I've added maybe just over a tablespoon of butter. This in fact is margarine, but now I'm putting the heat on to number three, so a medium heat, and I'll let that melt down, even though it's so hot in here, it's already melting. Right now this is where I add the flour and I add it one tablespoon at a time and see how it goes. Well one heat tablespoon. Hello? Oh hi there. Okay, typically enough, the phone rang, it's quite an important phone call, um, just as I was making this roux. So, as always, I had to stop uh, recording. Well, I've had to mute a bit of it, and I've had to stop recording a bit of it. Do with a little bit more flour. And basically, you just want to add a little bit more flour each time until you get it so that it's, it's not wet like it's looking at the moment. I'll keep mixing it and I'll show you what I mean. There we go. It's about right. Now what we want to do is leave that to cook off for a minute, otherwise it will end up tasting just of flour. So while we do that, let's empty out the stock into our pot. One piece of advice I'll give you while, while emptying your stock out, don't shake your um, colander. Oh, I've steamed up everything. Well done. Okay, sorry, I'm, I'm back. Now, don't shake this to get all the moisture out. Like, you can give it a little shake, but don't give it too much of a shake because you might shake the smaller bones through into the actual, um, into the actual stock, and you definitely don't want that in your pie. Okay, so I've added about three more tablespoons, and it was already, you know, it does thicken up even if you leave it for a bit, so don't, don't just make loads more and add it all in and hope that's, you know, hope it's not going to go too solid. I I have made it too thick once before, but you want to be very careful as well because you don't want it to start tasting of flour. If you add too much, it will end up tasting very floury and, you know, you don't want that. I'm going to risk one more tablespoon and that is it. And remember to mix it all the way around, so otherwise you'll get a thick section and the rest of it will be thin and, you know, gloopy. There we go. Perfect. Now, we add this to our frying pan of everything else. And the reason we do it this way around is we don't want 
to add all of this to it and then find out that there's way too much sauce. Do about that much first. If you add too much moisture to a pie, you end up just getting it overflowing and it'll be going everywhere. So you want to add it slowly, mix it all in as best you can, and then add more and so on and do it that way. Because it's harder to take it away than it is to just put it in slowly. And any of what you, if you've got any left over at the end, any sauce, you can actually make it into something else. And it does freeze quite well. I actually think that was the perfect amount. Okay, what I'm gonna do now is I'm gonna clear off an area and we can start actually making the pies. I've got about half the sauce left, so I'm gonna pour that into a fr uh, freezable container and that can go straight in the freezer. Okay, now I've got this little contraption. I've never used it before, but it's obviously, you, you put your doohicker in, you put your food in it, boop. I'm gonna give that a go. One thing I haven't got though. Now you can use egg to stick these, I just use water and it's, it's served me well so I'm not going to change my ways because I refuse to. Now as you'll see I've got a, pa um, a baking tray here ready and I've just dusted it lightly with flour. So now we take a bit of our mixture. Not too much. Overpacking them just doesn't work. Although you're tempted to, you think it's going to be nicer. It just doesn't. They spill out everywhere and they're not nice at all then. Let's we'll see if this little device works. I'd say that works pretty well. Okay, one. Now you can egg wash these afterwards to give them a bit more colour once they've cooked. I'm not sure if I'm going to bother because I'm feeling lazy now, I just want to get food done. Now it's starting to get a bit messy on here so I'm going to wipe it off every now and again just to stop the pastry from actually sticking long term. I don't want it to get stuck so give it a good quick wipe. Okay, that's one set done. As you'll notice, as I go further through them, I end up putting more and more in until more and more of them burst. And I, I can't understand why until I look back and I'm like, Way too much. Yeah, see, I'm not even able to close that one now because I've put too much in it. Do as I say, not as I do.
yeah, I messed, I messed that one up too. But it just means I have to crimp the edges. Now, if you don't have one of these crazy things that, you know, for what reason would you? All you need to do is put the ingredients in them, fold them over, and then just crimp it down with a fork. So you literally just fold it, and then you get yourself a fork. Not a plastic one, but that's what I've got next to me. And then you just crimp the edges boop, 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 exactly the same way. Now I do advise egg washing these because it actually will tell you more when they're cooked than if you leave them like without. Because leaving them without, they don't change colour too, too much. And because of that, it can be harder to tell when they're done. One way to tell if they're done is if you cook them and bits start spraying out. Then you know they're done. I put them on... 190 to 200 degrees and I'm gonna make the rest I'm gonna put them on a plate because I don't have any more trays at the moment as soon as I finish these I should have just enough time to wash up and then food should be ready I've, I'm actually quite impressed with this little machine it is doing what it's supposed to which is you know all I ask of it I'd say that was quite well planned out. When I say planned out, that was complete fluke that was the exact right amount and I'm really proud and shocked. But obviously the last one didn't stick. Bound not to, so I'll plunk it there. And then I would just, if I was making them myself, go like that. Basically all that does, it crimps the edge, it makes them look a little bit pretty, and it keeps them closed up while they cook. Okay, I will check back with the food in about 20 minutes. Okay, and there they are. As I say, you know, with an egg wash, they'd look a lot, lot more colourful, you know, a lot more yellow and so on, but what they lack in colour, they'll make up for in taste, I promise. Anyway, thanks for watching, I will see you again soon. Bye!